many of these females become uh, would-be dominants, and then they start biting. Then the people don't want them anymore, and they're banned to cages. If they're lucky, they come to a, a sanctuary and are released. Many of them are put to sleep, uh, and it's downright cruel. The, this is not how a meerkat should live, as a sort of a little doll or an, a, a sex child. And then as soon as it starts asserting its personality, it's then banned. Well, the number one disease, of course, is rabies. It's very strange. In the late 60s, there was a big rabies outbreak in, in the area of Bloemfontein. Um, the answer to it at that time was eradication of all small mammals. And a vet called Zunt was the man who did the autopsies on these animals uh, to check whether they were rabid or not. And actually I was just starting out with my mongoose research at that time and one of the very few papers I could get hold of was on um, reproductive cycles in the surrogate, the meerkat, and the yellow mongoose. And then when I finally got this, this reprint, I was appalled to find this was all done on cadavers from this, from this mass eradication of animals. And what is interesting, the yellow mongoose has never lost the, the, um, you know, the bad name of being a rabies carrier. The meerkats were found to be just as likely to carry rabies but meerkats in the meantime are the sweet little pets. Mm. Yeah. And people are keeping these animals in houses without any kind of, of uh, in, you know, inoculation against rabies. Dogs and cats are usually inoculated, but not meerkats. Mm. And if there is a rabies outbreak someplace, I can just see what's going to happen. There's going to be meerkats brought to the vet, to the vet for being put to sleep in droves. Mm.